Evening, folks, Melvin here. You may have noticed the supple sheen upon my brow, which only appears when I discuss select subjects very close to my heart. Topics such as Batman vs. Alien vs. Predator fanfiction, uh, Lucinda, my incredibly real girlfriend's upcoming lingerie spread in Victoria's Secret Canada. Because she's a model and that's where she lives. Oh, and of course, Zelda. No, Melvinator is not Nintendo's fantasy series, but rather the titular Princess Zelda herself. Like the Triforce, the Princess Zelda represents many generations of a woman that, despite descending from a lineage that puts Back to the Future to shame, gives Link the wisdom, courage, and promise of possible booby-touching that he needs to vanquish the evil forces of Ganon. So without further ado, here are my top five Zeldas from The Legend of Zelda. Let's talk about Ghost Babes. The Legend of Zelda Spirit Tracks picks up 100 years after the events of Phantom Hourglass. We meet the young Princess Zelda at the very beginning of the game before she promptly gets her soul ripped out by her evil advisor Cole as he attempts to resurrect the local Demon King Maladus. Wow, that's some dark shit, Nintendo. On the plus side, Zelda becomes Link's companion for the entire game. And like a cell shaded Patrick Swayze, Zelda uses her powers of possession for solving puzzles, mixing up combat, and acting as your ghost groupie at all your spirit flute concerts. That reminds me of my days as third keyboard in the synth pop sensation, Just Melvin. Ah, yes. Lots of ghost groupies at those shows. Uh, Ghost Princess Zelda is our number five. Next one. The Dark Kingdom of Low Rule is home to Princess Hilda, the Earth 2 doppelganger of Princess Zelda who lives in a dark universe where she never got over her punk phase and decided the best way to save her kingdom was to authorize a magic psychopath to turn her most trusted advisors into paintings. <sighs> to be young again. Though the lovely Hilda scores points for her affinity for Manic Panic Hair Dye, her enchanting theme song, and her uncanny ability to stay at the top of my deviant art feed, she takes our number four spot because, like most of my Tinder dates, she ends up catfishing Link with a tried and true beautiful princess power hungry sorceress routine. Boy, if I had a nickel, then I would just have one nickel. In easily the most bizarre premise for a Zelda game, The Legend of Zelda Twilight Princess inevitably finds Link transformed into a werewolf and chained up by the forces of evil. Is her name Zelda? No, but like Hilda, she's basically an alternate reality version of Zelda, and since it's our list, we'll allow it. This saucy, dark pixie from the Twilight Realm frees Wolf Link from his chains and then literally rides him for most of the game. Oh, my swords and shields. Though the titular Twilight Princess starts off her relationship with Link as a bratty, selfish bossy pants, Minna learns the error of her ways after transforming into a glowing tentacle monster, as one does, only to be restored by the sacrifice of Princess Zelda herself. Minna helps Link take on Zant, save Zelda, defeat Ganondorf, and she's also a secretly smoking hot babe. What can I say? I like my princesses like I like my apple teenies. Sweet, strong, and best enjoyed while riding a wolf. I mean, uh, Minna's our number three. I know this has nothing to do with my furry slash Zelda crossover cosplay club. Get that out of here. <sighs> with The Legend of Zelda Wind Waker, you might arguably have the best Zelda. Okay, now wait a minute, Mr. Guy in comment section. Before you get your hook shot in a tangle, I'm talking about Tetra, the feisty pirate captain who, spoiler alert, turns out to be a descendant of Hyrule's royal family, making her the great, 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 great 20 minutes later. Great, 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 great granddaughter of Princess Zelda from Ocarina of Time. Unlike most iterations of Zelda who send Link off on a quest for the Master Sword or the Seven Sages or the Triforce or all of the above. Looking at you, Ocarina of Time. Some Zeldas are just so high maintenance. Tetra is there fighting by Link's side from the very beginning of the game. She follows him from island to island to island on a quest to find Link's sister, who has a bizarre talent for being kidnapped by birds. Tetra is your homie first and a princess second. Heck, this bad bitch is the only reason you're even able to dome Ganondorf with the Master Sword in the final boss fight. Tetra is feisty, fierce, and fashionable, and she's also our number two Zelda. In this outing, Zelda leapt from the NES to the revolutionary Philips CDI. With the Wand of Gamelon, we finally got an adventure in which we got to play as Princess Zelda herself, and boy was it unforgettable. Oh, that was good! We have made evil! Link, go to Gamelon and find my father. Yeah, that old Ganon's no match for the king. You are my Hey! Silence! This'll make a great omelet! Here! Thanks. You've killed me! Good.
Okay, that's enough. <laughs> you can put your pitchforks down, Melvinites. One of Gamelon isn't really our number one, but rather an important reminder of how bad things can get before they get better. You're welcome. <laughs> 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 People say your first Zelda game is your favorite, and so long as that game is The Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time, I'd be inclined to agree. Link's first 3D adventure has it all, an open world, time travel, and no less than two Princess Zeldas. After being warped seven years into the future, Link, presumably still getting used to his shredded post-pubescent bod, meets up with Spirit Ninja and resident music instructor Sheik. Being a solid bro, Sheik's there to help you through the worst of Ganondorf's Kingdom of Evil, or at least show up in time to collab on a sick Ocarina jam sesh. Then, in one of the sneakiest plot twists in gaming history, Sheik reveals himself not only to be Hyrule's most badass harpist, but also Princess Zelda. While leaving young Melvi to sort out his newly confused boner meter, this Princess Zelda cops to being the reason her timeline went sideways. Like Huey Lewis before her, she and her beautiful elfineers send Link back to the point in time where they first met, effectively repairing his timeline through the power of love. That's the power of love. I mean, can you find a more perfect woman? She clearly cares for him and still sacrifices her happiness by breaking the space-time continuum to make sure her closest friend can have a simple and happy ending. <gasps> I'm sorry, folks. That ending, it gets me every time. I may be a man's man, but I have feelings too. <laughs> well, there you have it, folks. The top five Zeldas from The Legend of Zelda. Who will Zelda be in the upcoming Breath of the Wild? How does this game fit into the insanity that is Nintendo's official timeline? Would someone as provocatively attractive as myself use warm bagels as a substitute for the company of a woman? The answer to all of these except one will be revealed once Amazon sends me my Nintendo Switch. How to suck my ass. Well, folks, that's all the time we have for you tonight. I'm Melvin, and I'll see you next time. Lucinda's away a lot, okay? Hey folks, thanks for watching. To see a playlist of all my other top fives, click the box on the left. Or if you'd rather see another dope video, click the box on the right. Be sure to hit that subscribe button to keep up to date on all the latest Warp Zone content. Anywho, I'm just gonna go keep hitting refresh on the old Amazon page to see if there's more switches, so Warp Zone out.